Digging into a 1985 Badger 80 rear end. And I've showed you a couple videos of the Badger 80. Make sure you check those out. But I want to show you the inside of the rear end on one of these Badgers. I'm having a very, very difficult time getting these axles freed up, getting the brakes freed up. Both of these four-wheelers have been sitting for quite some time. I want to show you exactly what was going on on the inside. So make sure you stick with us. Check this video out. Uh, we're going to be going through completely uh, the rear end on the Badger 80. that we have off here now and I've showed you how to pull that rear end and I've actually disassembled some of that rear end uh, before I even started shooting this video. What I've done is I've pulled the center, I would call this an axle carrier. There's also a brake drum on here. This is the brake drum. There's a cover that goes over top of here. Typically these are going to be a 10 millimeter or a Phillips uh, bolt that goes that holds this cover on. This is what the drum looks like here. And you can tell this one's been pretty rotted out. Now, when this carrier was sitting up like this, there's four holes in the top here. What I did, because everything is stuck together here, even this pivot bolt here, this pivot arm uh, that your cables pull on was completely seized up. I couldn't get that to move at all. The difficult part is you don't know where to turn this lever so that, this, that these pads aren't putting pressure on this uh, drum here. So you either take and tap it with a hammer, tap it this direction to try to loosen it, or tap it this direction, you really have no idea. You can go off of this indicator here. This is your wear mark indicator here. And I went off of that. The problem is this lever is not situated where it needs to be, this arm here. And this indicator here is all out of whack uh, for whatever reason. Either this arm wasn't put on correctly or the brake shoes are completely destroyed on the inside. This got pushed clear in and it seized up. Uh, just countless different things that could happen here. So what I did, take my WD-40, sprayed it in these four holes here. Okay, one would thought I let that sit for a couple days trying to get this drum off of here. I thought, you know what, this is going to be perfect. It's going to come in and I'm going to be able to just lift this drum right off of there. That's not the case. These holes here, this is just a plate that goes on top of this drum here. So these holes, they go nowhere. So newsflash, that didn't help. So now what I've done is actually take, flip this carrier with the, the brake drum here over and I've taken my penetrating oil and sprayed it down into this groove here and I'm going to show you how to hopefully pull that drum off of there and uh, probably be a similar situation like this where we have some rust on the inside. Nothing that can't be sandblasted and cleaned up uh, but that is uh, really just got quite a bit of rust already on it. The other thing we've got our brake shoes here which is interesting these brake shoes look like they're in pretty good shape. Problem is, like I said, our pivot bolt here, our pivot shaft running through here is completely seized up. Our bearings aren't terrible in our carrier here, uh, but we're obviously going to have to do some serious work with this brake arm here to free that up. We've got the carrier off here, this side, and I'll zoom in so you can see this here, but we've got a bearing held in there by three Allen bolts, and I've got all kinds of grease in here, and I'll show you why we have that much grease in here. Uh, here in a little bit, but this is sealed up with an O-ring around here. We've got uh, 10 millimeter bolts all the way around this cover here, and that actually goes into this housing here. Let me let me zoom that camera in so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Okay. Zoomed in here, um, I've taken this off of, this was slid onto our axle here. I'll move the Dewalt out of the way. This was slid on and it looked just like that. So we had two nuts, a lock nut, and then a nut holding this carrier, holding this drum and our drum cover uh, right onto here, onto these splines. Okay, we loosened those and removed those two nuts that were here. I was able to get that brake drum cover off. Then finally, after a lot of work, I was able to get our drum off of here. So pull that off. Then I was able to undo the 10 millimeter bolts all the way around this cover here on this carrier. And I was able to take slide this carrier off. So now this is done and out of the way. Now what I have here is our axle and our pinion gear that's inside here. This pinion gear has a little bit of rust, but actually these teeth on this gear are in great shape. If you are replacing these, make sure you replace both of these together. So the axle 
uh, pinion here and then this smaller pinion gear as well. So make sure those get replaced together. This particular one feels pretty good. The teeth look pretty good. I've got another one here that I'm going to show you a little bit of the parts on that the teeth don't look that good on. So uh, this one's not bad. I just need to remove this axle out of this housing here. If you guys have some ideas for me to remove this, which direction it slides, uh, if, it, if it needs to come out, maybe this is, I know this is not the way that it's sold from Yamaha because I've looked up on the Microfish, all these pieces are separate, but just looking down here, it looks like this pinion gear is welded onto the axle. And I know that's not the case, but it looks that way. Now on our other one, our one that's in the bike right now, what I've done is removed this larger nut here, pulled it off of here, pulled this smaller pinion gear out, pushed it out, and I'll show you that here in a little bit. And I thought maybe I could take, use a rubber mallet, push my axle out this direction. Then I got to thinking, that may not work either. So I have got tired of pounding on this axle. I, I did not want to destroy it. You have to, if that's the way the axle goes, let me know in the comments below because I would really like to know, then you do have to remove this nut here and then this gear, otherwise this gear and this axle aren't gonna be able to slide out that way. So just curious, let me know what you guys' thoughts are. Let me know the struggles that you guys are having with these rear ends on this Badger. Uh, kind of an interesting thing, typically uh, you fill these housings up with oil. And I told you this carrier hat here had an insane amount of oil and grease on there. Now the reason why is because you don't have oil in this differential. What you have is a grease cert over here, right on your carrier, that pumps this housing full of grease. Now I need to look up in our manual how much grease you're even supposed to have in here. Do you fill it up or do you just squirt a little bit in there? If you know that answer off the top of your hand, just let me know what that is if you could. That would save me a little bit of time. I need to go ahead and remove this drum. I wanna show you over here. Uh, what we've done with our pinion gear, and uh, then I'll let you guys go. I do appreciate you guys watching. Give me just one second here while I move this camera. All right, so I've got this differential in our vise now to hold it. I've removed this gear here. You can see those teeth are completely worn down and destroyed. We've got a bearing on this side. We've got a spacer here. We've got another bearing. Now, if this was in here, it would be in there like this, obviously a little bit farther, and then we'd have this not here and the way that I got this off you are supposed to have a special tool to remove that I don't have a special tool to do that I do need to purchase those I'll put a link below for those uh, but uh, you can remove those with a hammer and a chisel as long as you're not reusing them and you want to make sure you don't get into the housing of the differential if that's the way you're removing this nut so purchase the correct tool do it the right way uh, I just got impatient and uh, use the chisel. Work just fine, but it's a little risky, especially if you're uh, rebuilding this differential because if you break this housing, you're gonna have a lot of money wrapped up into this housing here. So anyways, then once you get this nut removed, you get this uh, shaft out here with our gear, and you can just take and tap on that from the backside. That'll push that out. This is clearly gonna go in the trash can unless somebody wants me to save this for them. I can ship it to you. Um, but then I take and I try to tap this axle out going this direction. Again, not successful. Maybe I will after a lot more penetrating oil. Uh, the other problem is on this Badger, somebody used a uh, bit of a weld on here and uh, I'm either gonna have to cut this hub off of here or just uh, use this complete housing axle pinion gear all as one unit and sell it that way. So not ideal, but that's kind of the situation we're in right now. Again, if you guys have comments, questions, or concerns on this Badger 80, or really on anything, you guys make sure and let me know. Leave those in the comments below. Always appreciate a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. We've got hundreds and probably thousands of videos yet to come uh, repairing an ATV motorcycles. So make sure you leave those comments below. Appreciate you guys watching.